Hello and welcome back to Clam Man 2 Open Mic. Uh, we are... There's more to this game than I expected. So I expected to do maybe two episodes, maybe four, not more. But uh, that I'm not upset about that. Um, I just, since this is a demo, <laughs> I didn't expect it to go this long. Anyway, um, so... We were told there's a man across the street staring at us. That's not that guy, but uh, we should probably look at talk to that guy too. Let's see. Oh, there's wait. There's a whole bunch of locations to. Okay, well, uh, maybe it is this guy. Mac, dirt and dust are gathering in the lanky mackerel's mop. It's unclear whether or not it's intentional. Hey, you. You notice an embroidered name on his apron. Mac. I saw you leaving across the street. You in with those people? Those people? He lifts the mop off the asphalt. <laughs> Who mops asphalt? And pokes the air towards the other side of the street. The comics. Oh yeah, I am. He grunts. His mopping intensifies to the degree that the handle almost snaps. <laughs> All right, dude. A little mad? A little mad? All right. Uh, why did you ask about the Poseidon? Because I know that, ki that kind of business, and I know it's bad business. It'll be gone within a week, trust me. Yeah, I believe that. The club will be gone? Why? He looks away. You'll see. Why are you mopping the asphalt? Because we're closed. I'm not going to pay someone to do something I can handle my, my, by myself anyway. Boy, that answers no questions and raises a whole bunch. Um, no, why are you mopping the asphalt? Because it has to be done. Okay, in fairness, uh, depending on the places you've lived um, uh, or... or the places you've experienced for any amount of time. Um, there are certain places... This is something that I've seen in New York City, but also other places. Just, it's very common in New York City, is watering the sidewalk. That's seriously a thing people do. They just water the sidewalk. By that I mean, like, New York City is grimy. Most of New York City is pretty grimy. And... Like, the old timers all know you gotta rinse down your storefront, uh, the sidewalk of your storefront, cause, uh, you gotta wash away the, the cigarette butts and the trash juice and the homeless piss and all the other things. So, watering the sidewalk is a weirdly normal and not entirely nonsensical thing. However, mopping the asphalt allegedly I, I don't know why they're calling it asphalt because asphalt's a very specific material that is not sidewalk um but uh this guy's not totally insane but he's definitely insane but why he stops exhales and grits his teeth at you do you want to mop the asphalt no i don't i don't see why anyone would mop the asphalt in the first place Clearly, you've never worked in hospitality. Psh. I still don't get it. I don't care. Detection. Minus one. Figure out why he's mopping the asphalt. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. He's not just mopping the asphalt. He's mopping it with something. That What a terrible conclusion. How is that a success? Oh, you're mopping it with something. He looks up and around, dumbfounded. Wow. Wow, you got it. Yes, I'm mopping it with something. <laughs> this is just... That's just rude. I'm trying to play your game, game. <laughs> what are you mopping it with? <laughs> he screams. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in particular. He's just done with your shit. You know, suddenly I relate very deeply to Mac. <laughs> Eventually. 
eventually the eldritch, eldritch incantations turn comprehensible. You do you don't get to know. Now knock it off. <laughs> Oh, okay. That was weird. Almost comical, you could say. I'm getting a joke out of this. Do you want one? Psh, yeah. You got number six. Mop the floor. Oh, there's more? Let's see. Whatever you say, see ya. He grunts thee a farewell. He grunts the a farewell. We're closed today. Come back tomorrow, bud. Still mopping? Yeah, still mopping. Neat. Is it? Is it neat? He shakes his head and continues to mop. This conversation is over. Okay, see ya. That was an excellent uh, interaction and I'm happy to have had it. Um... All right. Uh, I guess I'll enter the alley. The duck is nigh. Oh, that's a... That's a woolly mammoth. Why is, why is there a mammoth? All right, Bill, why is there a mammoth? Bill, everyone's favorite homeless, homeless conspiracy theorist and one of your oldest, oldest friends in Snacky Bay. You can't tell what he's reading, but he's tearing through whatever book it is. His eyes don't leave the page as he acknowledges you. Just a second. His reading intensifi intensifies as he tears through the current pages in a matter of seconds. There. Sorry, I was in the middle of a really good part. What's up? Good book, huh? Really good book. He turns the front towards you so you can read it. It says, Temporality, Just a Prawn in Time, written by Magnus Adam. He turns the co cover towards himself, studying it as he continues. It's a strange mix of fiction, autobiography, and philosophy. I, d I, don't, I don't think you can do that. I think that's illegal. Uh, that is a strange mix. But it works. Surprisingly well, I might add. It's a story about time travel, essentially. The main character is quite obviously a representation of the writer in his own work. Quite obviously. Anyway, it's not the story itself that's the most interesting part. It's the way the book deals with time. What is time to you? Time is stupid and I don't respect it. Setting aside the idea that time is, is or isn't stupid, what would you say time as a phenomenon is? Here, I'll give you a clearer question instead. Is time linear? Yes and no. He smirks. How diplomatic. Indulge me. If you had to pick one, which one would it be? Yes or no? No. Why not? Because I said so. Hard to argue with that, he chuckles. So let's say time is the transition of past to present. Does that mean time is a linear flow from point A to point B, one dimensional? If so, does it have a start and end? And if so, where are those end points? Before you have time to respond, he lets out a laugh. Ah, they're just questions, brain teasers without answers. That's essentially what the book is about. Relativity and top topology of time. How we represent time and how we perceive time, as well as how that shapes our view of the concept. You're saying you're training to become a time wizard. A pause and then a nod. How do you know about time wizards? Anyway, I'm sorry to have derailed this entire conversation. Was there something you wanted to talk about? No, Bill, you're, you're great. You're just, you're just great. <laughs> Inspect the sign next to him. In large, bold letters, the words, The duck is nigh, a warning, but a hopeful one. Bill notices you looking at it. You want it? Uh, I forget. 
What's that whole duck thing about? The duck? You don't remember? The Duck of Truth is Snacky Bay's very own vigilante superhero. A crime-fighting Anatide who knows kung fu and makes everyone in his vicinity super honest. Anatide. Hold on, I'm gonna look that up. I don't know... Oh. Right. Duh. Doc. Um... Biological family of water birds includes includes ducks, geese, and swans. So assholes, got it. We didn't know how much of uh, we didn't know much about him until a few years ago, when he foiled the plan the corrupt mayor put into action. You should know you were there. All oh, right. And after that, the story spread. People became aware of the DOT. He stopped being a myth and started being an actual person. He looks at over, at the, over at the sign. No more use for that thing. That's a post nigh sign. So, are you not a conspiracy nut anymore? It's kind of rude, but... Again, the preferred term for conspiracy nut is either drama queen or conspiracy enthusiast. And to answer your question, not really. After I stopped raising awareness about the duck, I picked up new hobbies. He, raised his, he raises his book. Turns out that reading and educating yourself is kind of counterproductive to conspiracy theory. So what have you been reading? All sorts of things. The classics. Some physics, philosophy, good stuff, bad stuff. Keeping an open mind. Aw, conspiracy theories are fun, though. He grins. Hell yeah, they are. There's a difference in having fun with them and believing them. And there's always someone stupid enough to believe. Boy, this is on the nose. Uh, this seems rude. I'm not going to say that. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Uh, I don't like that it's not white. I want to see all of the... Uh, how? Reading makes you less stupid and conspiracy theory... It kind of requires you to be stupid. Depends on what you read. I've had a lot of people telling me that lately. It's always the crazy ones, and they always insist they're the sensible ones. You were more fun when you were crazy. Probably. I'm happier now, though. That is good. That it is, my man. Really? So if you... I, I don't love... I kind of liked that it seemed like most of the dialogue was, like, had some divergence and you could you could see, you know, basically one path. The fact that it has, like, you've completed this path thing, but, like, I, unless I exhaust every single dialogue option, this doesn't clear, is a little disappointing. I kind of like, because, like, there's some actual meaningful changes in the dialogue. Like, it's small. It's it's not subtle. It, um, but it's, like, it doesn't drastically change the course of the game. And I feel like that's the, or, well, I don't think it does. Um, and I feel like that's the best way to do the low-key version of dialogue choices. Is just, like, have responses that are appropriate, um, but that don't directly... That are and that are interesting in their own right, but that maybe don't have a direct effect on the story. And so the like, the completionist in me is upset that this is not marked white because I picked one path and stuck to it. Uh... Yeah, but what about my amusement? I'm sure it's one hell of a struggle for you. Couldn't imagine. By the way, this is where I live. This alley. Cozy, isn't it? Oh. It's still not clear? I was? You know, as the story spread, people can... Is that it? Nope. Okay. Maybe it's just weird. Anyway, we're gonna ignore that and stop trying to exhaust the dialogue. I'll leave you to your reading. Bye, Bill. Thanks. Talk to you later. He wets his finger and turns another page. 
All right, Wooly, uh, I have some questions. Is this an elephant in the room joke? Wooly, yeah, that's a mammoth, and it's still there even after you rub your eyes and pinch your arm. It stands frozen at the end of the alley as if guarding an entrance to some secret forgotten valley. One of the few things grounding the fuzzy, fuzzy monstrosity in reality is a name tag, just barely visible underneath the fur. It reads in bold, capitalized letters, Wooly. Wooly the Mammoth? Wooly the Mammoth. The Wooly Mammoth. Is it alive? It is very still, underwater and in an alleyway. What do you think? So it's dead. Mounted. It's almost certainly dead. <laughs> almost? While nothing is 100% certain, even the deathless- the deathness of said mammoth. That's not a word. That's not a word! Deadness, deathality, deathability, deathication, whatever, shut up. Why is there a mammoth here? Who knows, you could try asking it or just figure it out. Deduce it, Sherlock. Improv. Ask the mammoth where it came from. You close your eyes for a moment, channeling every iota of knowledge you have of mammoths and Ice Age, and when you look back up at the giant beast, it somehow seems more lifelike. The fur sways a little more, a little bit more, and the eyes almost appear to move. Sup. Share some of your ancient wisdom, mammoth. Burgers are sandwiches, and so are hot dogs. Meat between bread. Look it up, I'm right. I am this mammoth. <laughs> I love this mammoth. <laughs> A truly wise beast. Thank you. Sure. Holy shit, you can talk. Yup. But you're not much of a conversationalist. Nah. Where did you come from? The bunny's diner. Of course, I should have known. John. The bunny diner. John. Then the wind dies out. The ruffling of thick fur goes silent, as well as the mammoth. Whatever life you imagine seeing in its eyes has now vanished. Mammoth! 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 Okay, the mammoth's gone. Let's focus on what we found out. Something about a bunny and a John. They must be connected. Let's see what we can find out. Sure, why not? Later's Mammoth. No response. Well, thank you, Mammoth, for bringing that into my life. That was excellent. Uh, Alright. Uh, this one's gone a little longer than I intended. Uh, I'm going to cut the episode. We'll come back to explore more of this madness next time. <laughs>